Amen. You said, now what are you talking about? Right. I'm saying when you lied to that girl right. and told her you loved her well. and got her to commit fornication with you, well. you took something from her future husband that you can never give back. It's called her virginity. Amen, amen. Now sometimes we like to see ourselves as really good folk, but all of us did here. Most of us in here are guilty of defrauding folks in some shape, form, fashion, or another, and we cannot pay back all the wrong that we have done to folks. So thank God that He paid the debt of sin that I owe for me. To be in Christ is to be forgiven, it's to be right with your Creator. God, the one who made you and who knows all about you and who holds all things together and all things in the palm of his hand. To be in Christ tonight means to be in the church of Christ, the one body, the church over which Christ is the head. And make no mistake about it, it is not but one. What a great position to be in tonight, to have escaped the punishment that is reserved for the unsaved, those who are destined to join in with Satan and his angels. And wow. make no mistake about it, now hell was not prepared with any of us in mind. Wow. Hell was prepared for Satan and his angels, and we will go there through influence in the wrong association, but God never created it for us. You don't have to go there tonight. That's the reason to a dying world tonight we have gathered. We have put forth an effort this week. This congregation is sacrificing time, money, energy, and effort just to proclaim, go beyond the norm of Sunday, first day of the week gathering, and get together Monday through Thursday, and hopefully some soul is searching for God this week, and God will lead on him through you, and we will preach to them Christ to a dying and perishing generation. We will preach the gospel message to them, and we will let them know that God is the God of love and mercy and grace and truth, and God will save you no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter where you've come from. God wants you saved tonight, no matter how many bad decisions you've made, no matter how many mistakes you have made, and there is a decision, I mean a difference now between mistakes and bad decisions. See, everything you and I have done have not been mistakes. See, you can't mistake your life. <laughs> Go and get in your car. Come on. Get the right key. Right. Put it in the switch. Right. Turn it in the right direction. Right. Put it to the right left. Well, Drive through several red lights. Right. Then make the left. Then make the right. right. Then to look and see if another car right. is around. Then put it in park. Right. Then go in the liquor store well, and get your particular plan. Yeah. That's too many serious of yeah. it. To be a mistake. Yeah. Mistake you yeah. are when people are walking on the ice and they're not careful enough and one leg fly up and there's not enough support and then the feet and the eyeball are out level together and you know what's coming down. Yeah. That's yeah. a mistake. Yeah. But you don't mistakenly cry over her house. No. Right. Late at night. Oh, when no one is there. Oh, yeah. Get close to the door. Yeah. Turn the lights off. No, nah, don't get up here coming brothers since I made some mistakes. No, you did. Yeah. No, nah, you intentionally went over there. That's no mistake. See, some of the things I do are not mistakes. It's just hard headedness and rebellion. It's not mistakes. Amen. Break it down. I make mistakes, but I'm not going to get any better sitting here saying everything I do wrong is a mistake. Some of that stuff, Matthew, ain't no mistake. You pray for me because I know better. Okay. Trying to learn to do better, but I know better. You see, we live in a world where people feel hopeless. And we need to understand that. Satan has caused folks to feel like they don't have a chance. There are a lot of folks on the streets today that just have given up. They don't have any more fight left in them. 
I mean, how do you keep fighting when you keep getting up and life knocks you down and you get up and you put forth your best effort and you fire off this job and you try to pay your bills and every Friday you get paid, you're down to your last dollar and you're sleeping three to four hours and working two jobs and then you're laid off again and they're taking your stuff. How do you just keep getting up and keep going on when you constantly feel like life is dealing you a blow around every corner and how does she keep going on when she done tried to be a good woman and he lied to her and she get up and go to work eight to ten hours just like him or she work at home all day long just like him and she is committed and she do her very best and she put her money in and she listened and she cooked and she cleaned and she what and she said no to the weakened eyes no to the seductive language how does she keep going when she still used and abused you tell me because sometimes you know we want to act like it's so easy to keep going everyone who has stopped has not stopped because they are no good or they didn't mean no good some folks just couldn't take it I got on a bus once when I was a young fella and I'll never forget it I pray to God that he helped me to remember because I was judgmental. I was hypocritical in my thinking. Judgmental. See, you can get to go to church sometimes and get to the point that you think you're hitting them sometimes. And you look down and criticize folks. And I never forget, I had bought me a vehicle and a transmission when I was in Memphis, Tennessee around 1889 when I was visiting my family. Wait, that must be really funny. 1989. When I was visiting my family, and, and, and I caught the bus to go back to get my car once they had fixed it, fixed it at the transmission place. And when I was riding the bus, you know, a bus don't stop in every little bill to eat. I bill, I bill, who bill? I mean, every little stop. And that was this gentleman that got on the bus. And you know, people are amazed. If you watch folks, they are very interesting. Whenever you get on the bus, if people don't want you to sit with them, yeah. what they will do, they will sit on the seat and put the luggage over here, and then they'll look out the window. While you walk in the aisle, they don't make eye contact with you. They will all of a they'll be there and around. You ever know the bus? Everybody's looking out the window, and some of the aisle, but there's nothing to see. A suitcase or grocery bags are here. They'd be happy to have another child or two then. They are sitting there and everybody looking. People don't want to make direct eye contact with you because they may see that you are in need. And I sit at the back of the bus and I watch how the people watch this old fella, white guy with hair all over his hat, right. cut his mustache, and looked like he hadn't seen water in probably a month, a couple of Sundays, and he got yeah. on the bus and he was dirty and smelling, and I was sitting at the back of the bus eating, drinking milk and eating cookies, yeah. and I begged for him to come back. Right. And when he came back, I said, let me ask you something. What makes a man just hitchhike? From place to place. That's the obvious. You know, where, where, where are you going? Where, why, why, why do you keep hitchhiking from time to time? What's, what's your destination? Where are you trying to get to? And the man told me something I'll never forget. And they changed how I, and helped me to realize, don't try to make judgment about folks that you haven't had conversations with. Don't look at folks you see and try to make judgment about people that you haven't had conversations with. And you know, the man told me that after working for 20 something years, two jobs, to walk home and to find his wife in the bed with some other man, and to go to court, and to have the judge, to take the house, and give her custody of the children, and give them a fee, and the money in their account. He said he just hadn't been able to pull it back together again. Amen. He's a 50 some years old now. No one wants to hire a 50 some year old man with all these 20 and 30 year olds out trying That's right. to get a job.